Okay, how do we go backwards from this problem? We're trying to predict the starting material. In lecture, there was a slight error. The, the count, carbon count was off. So the way to go about this is bromine adds, bromine in a non-nucleophilic solvent adds two bromines across an alkene. And it does so in an anti-fashion. If we take a look at our, our product, those two bromines are both wedges, so they are sin to each other. And so there are a couple ways we can go about this problem. One way is involving redrawing the molecule. In fact, there's a couple different ways you can redraw this molecule. You can redraw so the two bromines are anti to each other. In that case right there, you make that bromine align to the top of the page. That makes the ethyl group a wedge. And that makes this propyl group a wedge, like so. And we can double check to make sure we did the rotation right by figuring out R and S. That's an S chiral center. That is also an S chiral center. S, S, checks out. Now, both the substituents are both wedges. And so, you draw your alkene. So both sub substituents are cis to each other, like so. And you get that as the product. Now, you could have also have drawn the molecule right now. Those are sin to each other. You can rotate one of those 180 degrees. to get one bromine as a wedge, one bromine as a dash. Now they are anti to each other. And then what you do to go backwards is simply redraw the lines as they are and add the double bond in that spot. And either method, drawing it this way or this way, will give you the same result that you want the alkene to be cis. And I'm going to actually double check this answer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. And the two bromines go on carbons four and five. Bromines go on four and five where the alkene was. Okay.